Welcome to the PPVG Gamescast. My name is Steve. Rich. Mo. We are the Passion Plane Video Gamers. And in today's episode, we're going to discuss the PSVR sales worldwide. Also talk about the Xbox Game Pass and what it means to the industry. Also talk about Destiny 2 character progression that Mo has a lot to say about. But we're going to start off with the Nintendo Switch. Our reactions, hands-on impressions of the console that was just released Tiny last Kong. Friday. Rich has probably played the most out of all of us combined. Oh, yeah. Non-stop. Can't of the enough. of the Nintendo Switch. So Mo, you bought it on launch day. You were the lucky one who got it on your Amazon, since a few Amazon did not get it on day one. What has been your impressions so far of the console? I didn't know that the Amazon was having so many problems. But that's whatever. Um, I had uh, mine arrived safe and sound. It was working. It's good. Uh, I'm really proud of that. Well, that's good. Yeah. You got the red ring of death on day one. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It works good. Um, I like the console. I don't like the controller. Um, I don't know how the, the pro controller is. I, I want to. Which controller? The, this one. This one right here. So we have the grip. Right there. Be able to show, be able to show them what the grip looks like. So, so, so the grip. Yeah, show it in your hand so they can see how small this thing is. Dude, it just it's just weird. I feel like this is for a toddler. Which was my whole point last week. Um, I'm actually very angry at the whole two-player uh, Joy-Con thing when you split, which is like this. I do not enjoy this at all. I think like it's like a fucking chicken tender in my hand. It's a chicken tender. Chicken Do tender. not eat it. <laughs> no, because it probably tastes like shit. And, t- <laughs> and ranch packets yeah. cost forty nine ninety nine. That's the actual games. Um, Do not put the games in your mouth. Yeah, I, I, I don't like that. I, I feel that if you were going to make, a, if they were attempting to make, well, that's what they were aiming for is the two player, uh, you know, in the whole living room thing playable. I think they should have included a, a pro controller in the, in the same boxing as well. I, I think it, it is overpriced. I don't. I don't think three hundred dollars was justified the means of what, what this should have cost. I think they should have included a pro controller, especially if you're going to do uh, uh, couch playing together. I don't like the little controller. I, I do. I, we tried it. I tried it on Bomberman, um, and it just it didn't fascinate me. I know that they they wanted to do it for the you know those uh, one two switch game and everything, but I, I don't play mini games. Like, Until this weekend, when we go to the park, I we'll play one-two switch. The park in the park. I tried to invite them. They left me stranded, but not this weekend. I won't be there. We're gonna have a picnic. We'll be at the park playing one-two switch. Your goes off every time within hundred yards. <laughs> Hawaii here. Eating so we're, we're chicken eating. tenders. The grip controller. I actually I thought it was more comfortable than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a terrible experience. I wanted to try it out first before I bought. The, the Pro Controller, if I can find one now. It's sold out. Um, but I've been playing Zelda. I played Zelda for about eight hours on the grip, and I've had no problem with the grip. The console itself was actually smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, I thought it was going to be a little larger when I pulled it out, and it <laughs> <laughs> when I pulled it out and it was smaller than I thought it was. <laughs> no, I, I just don't agree, man. It's just I, it feels so tiny in my hands. It's like like this controller was made Well, you for have Donald King Trump, Kong hands. Like, <laughs> we have King Kong hands. I don't care, but half of, like in reality, like if, if you're playing, you got to have something that like I I don't know how you guys feel, but I do like the size of both Xbox and PlayStation's controller. It's it's like a good size. I don't. I know that some people, some Xbox um, gamers do like uh, don't like the PlayStation controller, and that's fine. Um, I know that PlayStation made theirs a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, um, for that you know to try to market to them. But it fits comfortably in my hands. I don't. I don't feel like. I, I don't know. I feel like a giant when holding this controller, and I don't know how the PS4. You are a giant. Me. What? No. Do you think maybe that's a statement that Nintendo engineered the thing to? To work for smaller hands, which yeah, means it's for uh, younger people. Yeah, and, and you know, that kind of sets me off. But that's why they have the Pro Controller, sixty nine ninety nine. Why didn't they include it in the in the Because the you're not their target mar- market, that's why. They're they wouldn't have been able to sell it for $300 if they did add it in, when they have the grip as their solution. 
Um, I think it still should have cost two fifty, and include Pro Controller. Um, that's that's what I think. I have not played it on the go. I've only played it docked in on the TV. Um, How's been the experience? I I actually played it uh, on the go, not outside of my house. I just, uh, it was very interesting. I wanted to try it out and see if there's any big changes. Um, I know there was a a few things with Zelda where there was um, some, uh, what's it called? Skip frame rate, some frame rate dropping uh, when playing, when docked and playing on TV. When I went to uh, play on the actual, on the go, there was no frame rate drops, which was pretty interesting. I, I did test that out. The same, same plateau on the same forest, the beginning area, there was uh, some frame rate drops, but not when I'm playing off the screen and having right there with not docked. So that's, that, that kind of threw me off a little bit. Um, Rich, uh, I told Rich, and he, he actually said that maybe it's because of the, the space. Or yeah, memory. it could be a memory issue if they're memory trying to issue. show. Now, they yeah. said it's just a plug. It's basically the same as any other HDMI cable mm-hmm. is what the dock is. Yeah. But if it's having a problem allocating it needs to send out that secondary signal besides what's displayed, maybe some of the chips are getting overheated or overtaxed, and that would be why you're having a lag issue. Yeah. And you know what's crazy is that the, I did see some reports on some people that, that it is uh, gets really hot. Mine hasn't gotten really hot, but I have it in a big open space area. It's It has a lot of... You know, fluent air going through it, and it's good. Um, it's not like the PS4, the airplane, the jet. Oh, yeah, when it's taken off. <laughs> thing is loud. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, I, don't, I, I don't hear this thing. It's very quiet. It's a very quiet machine. Um, I don't know if the, the frame rate drop is going to be an issue. I can see that being an issue for bigger, you know, titles. Uh, if it's happening in Zelda, that's a problem. I, I don't like that. It, nothing should be dropping be, below 30, I think, frames per second. A lot of people think that's going too far, but 30 frames, 30 frames per second for me is it's okay. Like, it's well, it's still the showpiece, so it should be tuned to, to work on the hardware. That's right, my exactly. Opinion. Exactly. Yeah, the, the Wii U. <laughs> Plays perfectly a, fine on the Wii U. has a Wii U. <laughs> so 13 million of us have a Wii U somewhere out there. I haven't found anyone else who has a Wii U, <laughs> but someone someone out there does. Um, the console, again, I haven't played it. I've only played it docked on the console. I'm very impressed how quickly, like once you pull it out of the dock, it immediately you can start playing. And then once you put it in, it takes about two seconds to show up on, on the TV. Yeah. Um, the Joy-Con controllers. So with the Joy-Con controllers, I've had an issue with my left, which has been reported uh, Mo has not had this issue. I again, I played a Zelda for about eight hours, one two switch for about two and a half hours, and one two switch I didn't have the issue. But when I played Zelda on my grip, that's when my left controller played eight hours, desynced three times, and I haven't. That hasn't been that big of an issue for me because it's a few seconds. My issue I've had is my left analog. When I stop moving forward. On the analog, he still continues about one or two seconds, and I've fallen off a few cliffs. That's because a problem, man. <laughs> yeah, and especially when I'm on the map. When I'm moving around the map, I stop, and then it continues to go. That I haven't read. I don't know if I already broke my controller already, um, but that's my main issue that I've had. Um, it doesn't happen too much, but again, it does show when, you know, with Zelda, you have to be precise, and if I'm falling off cliffs... Or trying to knock down trees and walk walk past a tree and just fall off. And then my fiance then tells me, Why did you fall off like an idiot? And I have to describe that that wasn't me. I didn't do it. Why do you keep Again, falling off? <laughs> she, she judges harshly then. Yeah. For like, something that's not even your fault. Yeah, she's getting excited, wanted to see me play Zelda that I've been hyping up all this time, and I keep falling off a tree and she's calling me a dumbass. No, a lot of people have been Complaining about the movement issue in Zelda. So. You know, um, yeah, I played for six hours last night. Um, I, I wanted to give it a good go. Uh, that's the only issue I had. I didn't have any syncing issues. Uh, just the frame rate drops, that's it. Other than that, controllers were, were pretty smooth for me. Um, yeah, I didn't have any problems other than that. I just 
I don't like the controller. I mean, but that's just that's just me. That's just me. Well, but you guys are both having problems with the Joy-Con, the attachment for the shoulder I buttons, right? I do not. This this thing pissed me off so bad because. Uh, what is that thing? Let's see to explain. <laughs> so you attach it on, and it's like a shoulder pad for or the shoulder buttons for the actual um, Joy-Con. The Joy-Con. Um, once you attach it, then it, like, you have the you know. So you can play buttons. sideways. So, um, I. I don't know if there is instructions for this or not. I didn't see any. I looked all over. I the showed Spanish. him the instructions. <laughs> showed me the Spanish. The like, six font. The Spanish. The six font. <laughs> showed me the Spanish licensing thing. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't. I could not find the instructions manual. I was looking all over the box, everything, um, and I almost broke the damn thing. To tell you the truth, I think I almost broke it. Um, just trying to take the damn thing off because there's. They don't tell you that this thing latches on and. Maybe it's there. Maybe I'm just a dumbass like him falling off cliffs. <laughs> yeah. I did that with that, but whatever. <laughs> I guess we're, you know, two peas in pot. And, and, and for me, I got excited. I brought out the Joy-Con. I tried to attach it, and I put it on the wrong way, and I got it jammed, which is more user error, which is my fault, that I got it jammed. And for about 15 minutes, I could not play my Switch. I wanted to play 1-2 Switch. I had to wait because it was jammed. And it was a process trying to unjam it. I was ready to go to Best Buy to buy my... In those 15 minutes, you didn't rethink the decision to play 1-2 Switch? Absolutely not. Right. And I'll get into 1-2 Switch very soon. <laughs> of my feelings about that. But with the console, I'm the games are extremely small. Extremely. They, they are. Um, just goes up on the end. I'll show it. And anytime we get bored, I have Zelda in here. And we can just play. Start playing. Just play there. The you can even see they that's how small the game is and they actually put what do you know exactly what they put on with the taste so children don't no, it's swallow a chemical. Or a chemical yeah, yeah. they use it in various different products to make sure that if you were to taste that you know that i do not want to continue tasting it so that hopefully you'd spit it out and not swallow it so. I just want to know how many, uh, during the first month, kids are going to lose their games. No, I would assume it's a bunch of 25 to 35-year-olds are all going, I heard Neil on Reddit that this is, this is a really weird taste. They're going to try this. Uh, 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 and they choke. And What do you think we're doing tonight? Not that. Oh, we're not doing shots of Zelda. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's where I'm starting. Yeah, that's not, that's not where they're starting. Um, so speaking of Zelda, let's take a deep dive into the, the Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. How far are you in the game? What are your thoughts so far? Um, I barely got to the very first village, which I can't even remember the name of it right now. Um, I barely got there saved and just quit. Um, but I didn't run directly there. I, you know, I actually took my time and I wanted to discover the first plateau, the, the main plateau where you first start out. I went everywhere and I tried to get every chest there. Um, I had problems with the ice area because I, I was doing the cooking wrong. Like trying to get the the body temperature up, so I wasted a lot of materials trying to get that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's a mechanic. I haven't played, so I'm just hearing this and that that doubt hit me. So. Yeah, but I mean, I do enjoy the mechanic, the cooking mechanic. It's it's interesting um, that you have to do something like that. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Skyrim, but oof, um, mm, getting me hard. But I think I don't. I, I think Skyrim was more in depth. But you know, whatever. It's it's it's. There's a few games out there that do require you to make certain materials to make certain things so you can progress. Um, I Yeah, I did fuck up on that ice area. I didn't discover the ice area too much, so I'll, I'll be going back to see if I can find any other secrets there. Or Are you still else. in... Oh, you're at the, the at village. At the first village, yeah. The very first one. So you got the, the paraglider. Yeah. And you got the off the plateau. Yeah. Which I thought was a, a pretty interesting um, traveling mechanic, actually. It saved my ass a few times from... I went to an area where I wasn't supposed to go yet, and I was getting chased, and I almost fucking ate dirt. And we're not going to talk spoilers about Zelda, so I'm just going to get in the specifics of the gameplay of what I've noticed so far. Um, again, we're not going to talk specific story, but I just loved how at the beginning of the game, you, you actually received the items on, on the plateau. Yes. You, you receive all the main items that you pretty much, I think, you're going to be using throughout the game. Yeah. So during the first five hours, you have all your items, and when you leave the plateau, you start using those items during the shrines. Because in every single Zelda game, you get quarter heart containers to fill your hearts. But here, it's actually shrines. 
And shrines have about one to three rooms to solve puzzles or It's a like fight. a training area to me. That's what I saw it as, like a training area to get you familiarized with uh-huh. what's going on in the game. On know? the plateau. Yeah. On the plateau, the plateau is the... Yeah. But once you leave the plateau, the it's shrines it's, outside yeah. is, change. Yeah. is puzzles, well, one to three rooms of puzzles. Once you solve the puzzle, you get an orb. And every four orbs, you can actually use it to build up stamina or get a heart container. So it gives you the choice. As in, what is more important to you? Yeah. And I've gone stamina, and Mo, you've gone. I went heart. Heart. Yeah. 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 Um, which, again, that strategy, you know, you make it your own of how you want to do it. Again, focus on what type of player you are. Yeah. Um, also, I did enter a wrong area, as, such as you. Again, I'm on a tower, I see a shrine, I'm going to paraglide to it. It's longer than expected. It was about a 15 minute walk journey going up a, a few hills. I went into the shrine, found out I'm not supposed to be in there. This guy just kicked my ass. And so I left. And then there's a little skull fortress. Uh, it was one hit kills. But I was so determined and stubborn. So I was there for about 20 minutes. I died a few times. Like, I'm going to kill these guys. But they gave me a chance. There was bomb barrels. And I can throw a bomb in there. And you get an item every time you kill, like, a, a yeah, group. There's a few mechanics that are very interesting in the game um, that help you defeat like those particular like monsters so you don't have to just go in there and rush in and then think that you're not gonna that you can't kill them there are actual a lot of ways to outsmart the enemy and actually you you have to think of how you can take this if you want to if you're not at that level or, or progressing as far as long and you you run across an enemy that is uh, way higher than you or just stronger than you there's ways to take them out it's it's pretty interesting i think um uh but i mean that's I haven't had really a lot of issues. I still, I love the game. I love I'm it. I'm gonna keep playing it. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the only bad thing I have is the frame rate issues. That's it. Yeah, I guess I haven't noticed the the, the frame rate issues so far. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I'm too focused on not falling off cliffs. <laughs> Which is not trying to die. <laughs> if it continues, I'm buying a pro controller. So congrats, to Nintendo, if yeah. that's your strategy. But again, I haven't heard or read any reports of any issues with the left analog stick. I've just heard about the the syncing issues with the left. But again, Zelda, I love it. I can't wait to play more of it. That's what I'll be playing for the next few weeks. Hopefully before Mass Effect Andromeda comes out, I don't think I'm going to hit that deadline, that goal. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. But yeah. I'll, be, I'll be juggling like I always do. And then also uh, picked up 1-2 Switch. So 1-2 Switch, again, 28 mini games the fiance and i that's what we did friday night opened up after she helped me detach (laughs) and fix my controller when i was throwing a little tissy fit (laughs) being a little 10 year old pouting that already broke my toy pulled out one two switch played for about two and a half hours and i got to work i was sore my left arm was sore from playing one two switch from playing the game there's a lot of Hits and misses. <laughs> I just wanted to be clear why my left arm was sore. Oh, just the right way. Yeah. 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 Just want to make sure like, why my arm what are was we sore. Doing? Like left hand arm or the left. left you think yeah. you had the muscle control. Yeah, no, I am a lefty. Nope. So <laughs> I am a lefty, but I was sore with Wii Sports when I played that as well when the Wii came out. I, d- I don't exercise. That's what happens. I'm having, like, Vietnam flashbacks right now. Vietnam. music playing in your head. One, two, switch. Um, Like, the misses, there's, like, a gorilla game. There's a gorilla game where you have to tap your chest, and I have no idea how it's scored or how to do it. And there's a soda shaking. What was that moment? There's a soda shaking. You have to... That's not how you shake a soda. Yes. (laughs) Well, I didn't want to do it too quickly. I don't want to blow too soon. We just started. And no, it's like a left to right. Yeah, it's, it's not a masturbation like... movement. No, you, you, have to, you have to shake it. What are we doing? <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I'm talking about one, two, switch. You guys, I don't know what you guys are doing. I was talking about one, two, switch. I was talking about Sullen. <laughs> um, there's weird games. As you put a baby to sleep. So this is the one game you actually take the controller out of the dock and it has a baby face and you actually rock it to sleep and you have to set it down very quietly without making a noise, without waking up the baby. And you get timed and you get points for rhythm, 
how quickly you do it, putting a baby to sleep, eating contest. So one of the Joy-Cons has a camera at the end. It can notice the right one and you make eating moments and see how many sandwiches that you eat. Milking cows, again, that was the one I've been always excited for, is the milk cows, which we will be milking cows by the end of the night. I'm not milking anything. We'll make some. I already have it. I'll, I'll put in one, two, switch. We'll milk cows it's been here. all week. Yeah, it'll be, yeah. It'll be clear. When we go to the park. We're not going to the park. No one's going to the park at midnight. <laughs> That's even creepier. It's the best time to go. It's already creepy. There's it's a game that worse. you have to shave your face that, and see who shaves the most. There's some, some weird he might, games. You might be able to talk to Pokemon uh, Go players out there. <laughs> running from buckshot right <laughs> but the games i really enjoyed is that actually the the fake draw so I, I don't know if you noticed they do they don't say fire they do fake words and whoever fakes draws as in they might say fight and then if you pull it you lose so they do fake words in there and whoever fires first um there's a beach flag where you have to run you have to hit the button to grab the flag out um there's a treasure chest. So a treasure chest is covered with chains, and you have to move the controller to unwhip chains. Also, there's one where sneaky dice. This was actually very interesting of how they use the Joy-Con, is you shake it and you put it on, and then the other person shakes the dice, and it vibrates. And so if it vibrates seven times, that's the number that your opponent has well, of their dice. So if you don't think, so if it's seven vibrations, if I don't think I have more than seven, I can then shake mine, put it down and then there and then my number is going to change. Hmm. So we can fake each other out of how many they have. So again, a way to use the, the Joy-Con. There's one that you rotate in degrees and see how, how quickly without being, and I'm shaky, I, I have shaky hands. Um, but again, it was a fun two and a half hours. It will be a fun party game, um, but that's about it. Do you think anybody will develop using that aspect of the technology? I <laughs> That's a big no. No, no. Because the Wii U, when the Wii U first came out, when I saw Zombie U, I got Zombie U at launch. I'm like, this is for real. I'm hooked. I love Zombie U for the technology, not the game. The technology, what you can use the gamepad for, but they didn't use the technology. And that's why the gamepad, if you notice, is on our shrine of shame up there with the Xbox 360 Connect. Because they didn't, no one used the gamepad. Even Nintendo actually gave up and quit on it. And so to use it in Star Fox was a clusterfuck. So again, <laughs> I don't want to get too excited and jump again, as in it showed potential what they can do if they actually use it. So it has potential like the, the Wii U did. This has more potential. But if they actually use the technology in these controllers. And again, the one where the ball count, where you move it and see how many balls that's. Sarah was, was good. I don't know. I sucked at it. I couldn't tell. She she <laughs> rocked it. She rocked it. Yeah. So, but... But you bought Super, super yeah, Bomberman. I, I, I got Bomberman. Um, you know, when I saw... When I initially saw the, the game, I was like, okay, this looks like classic Bomberman. I want to check it out. So, I checked it out, and it was good for the most part. You know, there was a... Um, it, it brought back nostalgia for me a little bit. It did change uh, the the 3D effect. Uh, I do like that they have the classic uh, power up pickups. I know that there's a, um, you know, now there's boss fights in a story mode, and I haven't dwelled too much into that because of Zelda. I mean, that took up most of my time. That's all but, you need. Um, I did play the multiplayer. Um, that it's intense. The multiplayer on Bomb Bomberman, like up to eight eight players, I believe. I want I want to say. And um, all can use the, the little Joy-Cons. So if I bring the, my controllers, there'll be four players right there. So, I mean, that that's pretty cool. Um, but I don't like the Joy-Con controller. <laughs> I'd have to use a full... It's cool, but I ain't doing it. I used the full set. I mean, it, it was a great idea for them to do that, but um, I still need a... I think I, I need a Pro Controller just from my hands so far. So. But see, that kind of ties in with what I was saying with how they've engineered things. If they're building games for a guy like you that's more on the pro gamer kind of slant of things, you need a pro controller, Yeah. but it's not going to have the same functionality as the right Joy-Con. 
which shows you that that's just a gimmick. Yeah. That when it comes down to it, they're going to go towards what their base is, which is their first party titles will be awesome, <clears throat> but they're not going to use all the technology because they're going to use the IP. And then the rest of it's going to be shovelware, just like the Wii and the Wii U. Yeah. It's going to be Barbie's Horse Adventures, and they know that when some mom is buying that for nineteen ninety nine, that they don't have the ability to use the technology where they're like trying to tie knots to make sure that the horse doesn't get away, so they're using all the motion controls the right way. It's just they. Steve's it's getting shovelware Steve, for a reason. Steve is going to get Barbie Horse Adventures. I can see. He's that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. He midnight. To I'll get that midnight. Everything. I'll make sure. He's Absolutely. that tight. He'll do it. Absolutely. <laughs> but with the technology of the console, it's it's off to a promising start. I know they just announced it was one of the most successful, if I think believe the most successful uh, Nintendo launch that they've ever had. And GameStop said it was very successful. Even though GameStop said it was the most successful console launch in years, which doesn't it happen every time every yeah. few years. That happened a few years. Yeah, that was the last one was Xbox One and PS4. Of course, it's the best one in years. But but that's our take so far on our reactions and our first hands-on impressions. Mo and I will be playing more Legend of Zelda. I'll get Rich to play 1-2 Switch with me so we can milk some cows so we can get his impressions. He's not playing that. Not but again, it looks promising. Oh, again, only free. time would tell if it will be successful. But off to a great start, Legend of Zelda. It's a great way to kick off a launch. Again, they just have to continue Mario Kart in April, Splatoon 2, get some more games, constant flow, so they don't fall in the same mistakes as the Wii U. We'll see. We will see. All right, and that's our take on the Nintendo Switch. Please leave your comments below of your reactions of how you felt about the console, Legend of Zelda 1-2 Switch, and Super Bomberman. Yes. So Bungie has finally released information on Destiny 2 and character progression, which Mo has been waiting for this. So what they said is power, possessions, and Eververse related items and currency will not carry over to the sequel. So all those hours that you poured in, Mo, I'm sorry. But the class, race, gender, face, hair, and marking selections, Mo, look at that, your face and your it's class. Hit by a helmet. Yes. For all characters that have achieved level 20 and completed the Black Garden story, mission will carry forward. Again, a developer, this was the reason that they said, to introduce the major advancements and improvements that all of us expect from a sequel, ensuring it will be the best game we can create unencumbered by the past. What is your take, Mo? This one hits the heart. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed, but uh, I am disappointed. It's not even kind of. Um, you know, for everybody that poured money into Destiny and spent money at the Eververse and all that, um, I do feel for them because those were just minor cosmetics. It wasn't something that was some, you know, like a huge change. You didn't get like a incredible, crazy upgrade. You just got like different horns for your sparrow. You got different sparrows. You got emotes. That should like all transfer over because they're just emotes. They're not. They're not huge. People poured like. Fifty dollars, probably. I know some people that did fifty dollars just to purchase these damn things. Um, but those hours of entertainment in the first game, though. Still, I mean, transfer that that minor stuff over, don't you think? Like it's it's not. It, it, they they poured money into it. They should. But I put one hundred and fifty five hours in Oblivion. Why did that not carry over to Skyrim? It's a completely different game, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's the same world, though. But it took place in a different world, a different area of the world. Yeah, but it's is it the it's a different character. And how so many years? How many sense. years uh, between both games too? In Skyrim and Oblivion. So what if they do a time jump storyline wise? Is that okay? I, I still you spend so much money though, so much money. How much? How much? Like for the fact that everybody came in and even spend the money for say, like a Legendary Edition for Oblivion or Skyrim. Um, you know, that a lot of the stuff still... Like, if you spent on the uh, the one in the past, the the when the Skyrim first came out, and they started bringing out DLCs, and now there's, what, Legendary Edition? Or the Special Edition, whatever? If you purchase the old one, they still give it to you for free. Now, the updated version. Mm. Did they not? Steam, Steam did that. They, I mean, I'm a, I played on PC... And no, I, I got all that information. Oh, trans so. uh, um, they transferred all that information over. You got it for free if you bought the original one. 
for with upgraded, you know, like you know their uh, HD graphics, all that. So no, I mean, but that was the same game. It was just upgraded graphics. What's the level cap right now? Do you know? Well, it's forty, and then you got light levels, so it goes up to. I, I don't even know what the light level ends up. Three thirty. I've seen. Yeah, when we stopped reading, we didn't have light levels. Yeah. I don't know. Because sure. I played. I bought it on launch day. Again, I was excited. I bought in the hypers, Bungie, the new universe. I bought Destiny day one. I got the experience. I went to level twenty. I beat it, and then I found out it just changes. That's not experience points. You have to get gear to get light. So yeah. I made it to level twenty one. I'm like, I'm done, and I haven't played it since. I played it for two weeks since launch, and then after that, I have not touched it or went back. I did not, I had no idea what the fuck I was doing, the storyline. I guess you had to go online was some of the story. Yeah. No idea what was happening. Yeah. Um, you know, like, it doesn't bug me that the guns aren't carrying over as much, um, but at least some of some of the cosmetics. Not not all. The, the ones that actually cost you money to buy... The people who spend that money, that that should transfer over because it's not huge. Okay. It's not it's not a big change. It's not like um, you know they're going to change a whole area for whatever's coming up in new game or whatever. It's just small stuff like emotes and the sparrow. You know, I don't know if they're going to include sparrows in the second one, or you know, I don't know what they're building off of. And if that's the reason, then yeah, but include a little bit more information instead of just saying your character's going to carry with the cosmetics, well, which is not E3. A, a big thing. Well, yeah, we'll wait for E3. Still scheduled for a t- 2017 release, so at, at the end of the year. The first one was released in September. I don't know if they will do a September release again or still just go for the fall and be November. I have a feeling they might release in September. Um, we'll see what happens at E3 if they do show it off. Um, hopefully it'll give us more information so I won't be so angry because <laughs> it's a lot of hours, man. It's Do you think a it's a way to balance? Though, again, like I'll even though I hate Destiny, fuck Destiny, but, again, I'll give it a, a, another chance. Again, I'll probably pick up Destiny 2. But, again, I've only played up to level 21 and if someone played and all this light, all these hours... Would that be unfair to me if they were able to carry... Like, what would be your ideal? What do you want to be carried over? <clears throat> well, like I said, just just minimal items. Not not everything. I don't care about the levels. Because if you if you take a character... Okay, that's cool that you, you transfer him over and he starts back at level 1. But at least some of the stuff that I acquired, like, like Rich was saying, the ships, which just wasn't a, a big thing. Like, if you're tra- traveling, it's just... All it does is change the loading screen from... Area to area, don't. I mean, some people actually put money for ships on that shit. So, yeah, yeah. so I mean, all it does is change the loading screen. I mean, if you're going to change that completely and it's no longer going to be a thing, cool. But at least say that it's it's not a big change. It's not something that's like incredibly going to change the whole universe or the game it, itself. It's just the loading screen. That's all it did. It's all it really changed. That's what the ships were for, loading screens. So. No, oh, when they first came out with this idea and the, and the first pitches and the first. You know, the first uh, press conferences and stuff like that didn't it seem like it was going to be a persistent world. That this was like the Halo version of Warcraft on on consoles, and you're going to buy Destiny, but Destiny's going to evolve over the next decade. So there wasn't ever going to be a Destiny two. It was going to be Destiny, and then they give you the Iron Banner. That's like what it was stuff. supposed to be. So don't you think, especially considering this, where they're saying that that money you pumped into it, we don't care, that's disposable, and we're going to make you repurchase, or we're going to clear it out, and we got our whole new, buy all our new packs of emotes and, and shaders and all that kind of stuff. That's them saying that their original plan, either they can't make it work or they don't think it works. So they're going right back to the, every couple of years, we're going to do a new Call of Duty, and all we do is reskin the map, give you a different loadout, but basically there's the fast firing pistol, the medium, you know, kind of damage, faster machine gun, and then the sniper rifle. And then you have little variations there, but that's what they're doing. So like World of Warcraft. They never had a two. They just had all these expansions building on the world that and they, they had. And they build on that, but you can be you can be a guy that comes in five years in that game's life and build your way up. But if you want to get into arena, you need to finish a lot of that single player type of content. You need to go on raids and get in a clan, all that kind of stuff. And this is not a Warcraft player, but I understand the concept. Yeah. And then you're strong enough now, you can start making an effect in arena. That's where you get specialized equipment there that makes you stronger in that aspect. And it pays off that way so you don't get left behind, like you were saying, the balancing issue. But theirs is basically, no, we're going to start over 
They just happened the whole time. The storyline didn't matter to you. The money you it spent didn't matter. on this. The the community features of remember the whole the first ad was basically we're all gonna hit each other up on our little apps on our phones and be like, Hey guys, we're doing a raid at six thirty, you're off at five thirty, you're off at five. I expect you guys to be ready and, and launching to be be on this uh, this mission. They didn't do any of that stuff. It was all concept, but they didn't follow through on even the storyline aspects. To me, they're giving you guys the finger. That, they already lost my business. That's 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 what I feel like. It is, it is a kind of a fuck you, you know. So, well, but fuck saying, don't worry, we'll well, we'll fix it that's, now. That's where I'm heading towards. You know, we'll see what happens. But to me, that's that's very much a. We know we screwed up on the last one, but give us your money again, and we promise we'll do it. Well, you already you already cheated on me once. Well, I'm well, not going to marry you now. Well, what you're saying, that's exactly how I feel. Oh, and and you know I. I completely agree with you. Uh, you know, unfortunately to say, um, but you'll still pre-order it, and we'll see. <laughs> I don't want to jump ahead. I want to see what happens. Do you think and... that there's some unless they completely drop the ball and give you the finger? If it was what they what you think it is today, and they said it's launching in six weeks, would you go in tomorrow to GameStop or Amazon or whatever and pre-order? Probably not. Okay. Probably not. What's been your experience with, with Destiny? I know you play. I don't know if you finished the level twenty. Um, no, I got through level twenty. But when I came in was when they had first updated it, and the light system was in there. Okay. But of course, I'm not where I'm earning the light system yet, or I can't access it or whatever. So I'm probably like three quarters of the way through the main storyline. But I don't know how much of that is DLC that was added in later. I still have the old. Uh, the old voiceover, I don't have the Nolan North as the ghost yet oh, and stuff. Okay. So I didn't have like the bigger, the second or third DLC pack. Yeah. And I got through there and just kind of went, no, this is just the grind. And it's randomized weapons. And there's, to me, it just seemed like I'm just doing the same thing repetitively. And as I've said before, I'm a story guy. So I got bored and said, this is fun, but it's not that fun. And I was playing on my own because I was... Said before, isn't this our premiere episode? Our second premiere episode? This is episode four, for anybody keeping track in this group. Um, We're there? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. But, yeah, Mr. Transparency, you can see from my very <laughs> alabaster Um You look veins. Other um, episodes. Yeah. The lost episodes. Sorry. Maybe we might post them. Well, we've had discussions as buddies. That make you feel better? Well, keep the continuity? Anyway, that's true. <laughs> no, uh... I'm a storyline guy. I got bored and I didn't have friends that were currently in the game where I could hit up like my friends list on Xbox and be like, hey JP, let's go through there and because my buddy Justin, huge Destiny player. And you know, he he was like, No, he's the one who convinced me to get it. And I waited a week or two, and by the time I did, he and his girl were not playing it anymore. They were they were done and they had maxed out their their light level and they were like, Yeah, I'm done. So I guess it was me being ignorant and not knowing how MMOs, I guess, are. If the experience points continued after level 20, I might continue to play. Because, again, I'm not going to do raids. I'm not going to grind for gear that I might have wasted a half hour for, for nothing or an hour just for gear. If I got experience points as I've done the first 20 levels, then it's something I might continue to do. I don't know if that isn't because I don't really play MMOs or know how the experience points, but I just thought that was weird how it changes from experience points, and then after that, then it goes light and gear to, to level Which up. is the same thing. It's just a new classification for experience points. Yeah. It's their way of saying, this is level 31, but no, we max out at 30 character levels, and now we're going to do 20 levels of light. So you might be, oh, I'm a level 30 character, but I'm only a level 2 light, and he'll be like, no, I'm a level 7, so his character could kick my ass if we had an arena mode. No, but if I go on a raid, though, at least if I don't get the gear I want, I don't level up. Because that's what happened. I went to level 21, and I did something. I didn't get any gear, and I didn't level up or get anything. It was a waste of my time. So if I got experience points, at least, for that time that I spent, I might continue to play. Even though I might not get the gear, but I got experience to still level up. Rather than, you. I'm not going to grind yeah. for gear. And I was like, I'm done. I'm over it. See, I was never a raid guy. I didn't like... Uh, and a strike? Is that what... I like strikes, but, you know, the only reason why I like the strikes is because they actually paired you off with random people. You're just trying to get done, trying to get, like, some particular just to move on or get what you like. 
Um, whereas a raid, you had to know people, you had to connect, and they're like, oh, well, go be social. Well, I'm like, I don't have time to go and look for five other players, you know? And, um, Especially with our schedules. Yeah, with our schedules. late night like, guys. Three I in mean, the morning, it's hard to find people. Yeah, I'm not... The, I mean, Three you in the find morning. Once, uh, five, mm-hmm. like, probably four people or whatever, but a total, a, a complete squad until you play with people that you actually know or that keep going repetitively, yeah, fine. Um, no, I, I I hated the raids. I just, I played a few of them and I understood where they were going for it, but they weren't the funnest things that I, I did on Destiny. But then again, you know, I'm an Iron Banner guy, so that was where I spent most of my time. So that's our take on the news. Bungie finally talking about the sequel to Destiny. We'll get more information on E3, see what changes. Again, I know, Mo, you're a big player. We'll see if they're able to reel you in. Rich and I, we did not like it at all, uh, but we'll see. Again, I'm open for two, again, depending how it is. Uh, but that is our opinions on the progression system over to the sequel. But please let us know in the comments below what you feel. So last week, Xbox announced Game Pass, their monthly subscription, $9.99. Rich and I know all about $9.99 for the, the network. The network, yeah. The network, $9.99. Very easy. Over 1,200 hours of SmackDown. Added in the last month Ooh, alone. There we go. Look at that. We are cross promoting our next podcast. But with this Xbox Game Pass, what do you get? Each month you get up to more than 100 Xbox One and Xbox 360 games, new games added monthly. You get a 20% discount on those games if you want to purchase them. Get 20% discount, 10% off DLC laid to those titles. And PlayStation has PS Now. So the difference is with Xbox Game Pass, you can actually download the games to your Xbox One or Xbox 360, and then that will take away any streaming, bandwidth, or have to worry about being connected to the internet. So again, you have to don't have to worry about that experience. So just with the announcement, Rich, I know your Xbox. Mm-hmm. What is your take on Xbox Game Pass? It's a good idea. I probably wouldn't uh, subscribe to it myself, but I think it's a great idea. I think it's the, a step in the right direction. Anything to get people more towards digital adoption, and you know, I'm, I'm biased. I've I had, back in the day. I've worked for GameStop and for EB Games and stuff. Anything to take out of their little circle of life, as everybody's been talking about on YouTube in the last month. I think that's a, a step in the right direction. I th- I don't like their pawn shop mentality so better for developers pawn shop mentality because developers well my game is three dollars no it it can be good for the retailer and it can be good for the customer but we need the developers to be alive to make further innovations further iterations and if they go out of business because the first you know first party uh sales are not there but the secondary market is heating up they don't know because GameStop doesn't release those numbers to them and they don't get a taste so what's the purpose if if you have a great game like Titanfall part of the reason that it's been rumored too soon I, I don't know but too no, soon but, but that's one of the things with the first one is it did have good word of mouth for the multiplayer for the first one and it sold well enough they made the second one and the second one they're not releasing numbers yet but they're saying it made what they thought it would but again, secondary market is supposedly up there, which means word of mouth is working, but people don't want to pay $60 for just a multiplayer experience. But obviously, what they made... Battlefront, fuck you. No, but what they made resonates with people. I want them to keep... I want to see a, a Titanfall 3, and I'm not a Titanfall player. Yes. I want to see them do that. I want to see them take that technology and put it in other IPs also. But if, the, if they weren't part of a bigger development conglomerate then they would go out of business and we might lose all that potential how many how many ips have we lost or how many great innovative games and stuff look at what's going on with insomniac now where their ghost stories is is the new name of the company because they had laid off everybody except for i think 12 or 15 people the people that made the bioshock series went through such massive layoffs that there were less than 20 people working in the studio 
Now they're they've turned it around, but who would have thought after Bioshock Infinite that you wouldn't be able to uh, you wouldn't be able to maintain a developer? So this is this is something because I would assume to be part of the program, it's kind of like the Games with Gold program. The developers get a piece of those sales. Being certified by Microsoft like that, I'm sure they take the lion's share, but you get something. GameStop, as far as I know, does not share their secondary sales. They don't sell the numbers, and they certainly don't share the profits. So this is beneficial for everybody. And the new games, so I have a list of a few games that has been announced. Fable 3, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, Halo 5 Guardians, Lego Batman, Mad Max, Mega Man Legacy Collection, NBA K 2K16, Payday 2. Mo, I know you liked Payday, those games. Saints Row 4, Reelected, Soul Calibur 2, and Tekken Tag Tournament 2. But again, it's been announced to get over 100 games. So if someone buys an Xbox One, pays $9.99, you automatically get access to over 100 games right off the bat. And they might be older games, but still, the quality of those games over 100. It's like with Netflix, there's hits and misses. With Netflix, download it to your console. If your subscription expires or is canceled, then you can no longer play it while it's downloaded. But you do keep your achievements. You keep your progress. Xbox Live Gold is not required to play Xbox Pass, but to play the multiplayer, you do have to have Xbox Gold, such as Halo 5 Guardians, which is supposedly one of the best multiplayer Halo games. Uh, the story, that's a whole different <laughs> subject. We'll have a different podcast for Rich to tell his uh, opinions on the Halo 5 story. Spoilers, it was Cortana. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Wait. That's why I said. Wait, Windows. Windows. <laughs> hey, Cortana. You oh, fucked up my story. <laughs> is that what it... What? Yeah. That's what you say. That's what you say we put in Halo. You yeah. say, hey, Cortana, screw up this storyline. Cortana. Hey, Cortana, make 343 Industries look stupid. I usually make Cortana look for, like, pizza places for me. You know <laughs> I never play that game, so I don't know. So what is... What do you feel about Xbox Game Pass? Uh, it's a smart idea. I mean, um, it, it's... Uh, if I looked at it closer and I would see some titles that, for instance, I've never owned an Xbox. Um, and if I was going to own, if I go now and buy one and this comes out and I see some Xbox titles that I've never played. Please was, make Battletoads. That's why. That's when <laughs> Mo will buy an Xbox. I want to see Battletoads. It's a system seller. It's a system seller for me for some reason. <laughs> I just, I'm excited. Anyways, um, if, if there was some Xbox games that I wanted to go and play that I've heard of and just never got the chance to play at a friend's house or something. I would I would dive just to play those whole classic games. I mean, it's it's something that that would interest me, but I would have to see the titles and um, see how they appeal to me, and then you know I might I might jump. Uh, I'm with you, Rich. I don't think I will subscribe, but I do think it's a great model to start. Again, to bring in newcomers. Especially with Project Scorpio coming out at the end of the, end of the oh, year. No. Scorpio at the end of the year. Getting to... Because Xbox One was off to a terrible start. That was a clusterfuck. Yeah. That they are trying to turn, turn back the clock. Start fresh. Um, but PlayStation has something similar. PS Now. Yeah. Are, are you... I, I, I tried it out. Um, there were a few games that I couldn't play on there that, that were on the PS Now. Um, I did not pay for it because PS Now does give you a, a two-week trial to try everything, like just to see if it appeals to you or not. Um, but I don't remember if there were any trophies to to earn on there. I don't think they, they enable the trophies. Do you care um, about trophies? I really don't. But there's a lot of people that do. Oh, okay. I think caring about other people. Cares about trophies, so achievements, awesome. achievements. Yeah. Well, over seventy five thousand <coughs> points. Yeah. Right? I mean, so Which there's isn't huge, but compared to my pool of friends, number one. No, but there there are a lot of there's a. There's it's not a, about the size, Rich. There's a demographic for trophies. I mean, there, that's there's, not what she said. But it's <laughs> not what my dog said. <laughs> well, <laughs> number one. That's a different trophy. So <laughs> you say my dog's a trophy? Huh? Just let's move on. Uh. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm the one who has all the bitches in their lap. <laughs> what are you talking about now? That was the cheetah's joke. 
Uh, all right. <laughs> Xbox, PlayStation oh, Now. You said you tried it. You yeah, said no, you tried PS Now. I, I liked it for what it was. I, I can understand um, um, people going into something where, where they wanted to try it. Like, say, they're, like for instance, uh, um, when the PlayStation 4 released, they, they brought some of the Xbox players. And unfortunately, say they did. They did capture a few because of what was going on with the gaming. Um, it didn't oh, appeal. Down. A lot of the, the good systems they came up with were ones that we were raving about on the 360. Yeah. And had been dropped by the one, because the one was trying to be the all-in-one home box. You know, it was going to be your cable provider, your DVR, your Netflix streamer. And gaming was the last thing that they had, and they dropped the indie development, the Xbox Arcade. Yeah. The stuff that I would have been selling you on mm -hmm. was the stuff that PS4 picked up. So and then so a lot of people jumped, and then they were yeah. like, okay, well, what is PS4 about? And <laughs> they, were, they were trying to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so if I was an Xbox player and never owned a PS4, and then they wanted to try some of the, some of the PlayStation... Three games. Uh, I don't even. Do they have PlayStation Two games? Somewhere? I'm not even too sure. On, on now? Yeah. They do. Okay. Um, you know, I would have played some of those classic games that were available, um, but I still I can't think if there were achievements or not on their trophies. Um, but it wasn't interesting. I, I tried it out. I liked it. I didn't pay for it. I wouldn't get it. It's not for me. I, I have half the games on PS Two and PS Three, so there's no reason for me to get it. Yeah. Xbox Game Pass is tested now. And it has a release for the spring. And we'll see, you know, how successful that is and how much of a game changer it will be for the industry. Pun intended. Pun intended, <laughs> yes. Uh, Phil Spencer last week did mention that it could be a possible platform for episodic and smaller story-based games. Rich, have you played the, the Batman, the Telltale? Um, I played the first one. I'm aware of what goes on in the story. I haven't had time to play through the other four episodes, but yeah, that's a perfect example. And back when they first started that, uh, the first time I tried one of those free trials with the Telltale was Back to the Future, mm. where they did that. And I played that first one. It was a free download, and I actually think it was on PlayStation 3, mm. where I got the free download. And I did that, and then I went and bought the, the physical copy of all five episodes on one disc for Xbox. So they kind of screw themselves there. But I did. I played through that, that first episode twice because they convinced me and it was because they did the, the good marketing of, hey, try this over here. You get a free month to try this. And yeah. I, was, I was sold on the product. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. It's just good gaming. I mean, it's a good way to, to market it and process it. Well, in those games especially, it makes sense for what you're doing. You do feel like you get a full experience. Plus, there is enough variation in the gameplay, whether you're playing the Fables game or whether you're playing the Walking Dead, Act of the Future, the Batman game, the Borderlands game. Yeah. There's enough that's familiar if you like the IP that you get sold on it, or if you just like Telltale, you're sold on it, or if you just want a fun game. Yeah. And being able to try it like that, I think that's an awesome approach. Especially with Telltale, that, that's a good story. Just mm -hmm. story run all together. Yeah. Um. So we're excited to see the, the prospect and where it goes with Xbox Game Pass. Uh, please let us know in the comments below what your feelings are and the future it has for the industry. Sony has finally released their numbers, their sales for the PSVR. So as of February 19th, the PSVR has sold 915,000 units worldwide. The company goal was 1 million during the first six months, it launched on October 13th. I picked it up on launch day. And I absolutely love the PSVR. When you came over, Rich, which games have you played on the PSVR? So two different times. We started with the Batman, the, the Arkham Knight. I don't know what it's called. But the Batman VR one. And then we did the Battlefront the edition for the uh, Rogue One DLC that they did that was in the VR. Completely sold, and I am, I'm one of those guys that was very skeptical, but yeah, it's it's on the radar. I gotta see what else they come up come up with, but because I don't have a PS4 right now, so that's a an eight hundred dollar investment at least. So it's expensive. Um, but yeah, I know it looked like you loved Batman. Oh, You're yeah. having a good time, and I was actually learning from you with all the Easter eggs that well, was involved. You haven't played the Arkham series. Yeah, I haven't played any of the Arkham series, and um, I beat. Arkham, I was going for the, the Riddler, and you found some other stuff that I didn't actually find during the game. 
And Mo, what have you played on the PSVR? I played the London Heist. Um, I was I was amazed. I didn't know that that VR went that far ahead. I just it, it just captivates you, man. Like you're in there and you put the stupid headset thing looking like an idiot and you just go into another world um yeah it's amazing i just i didn't think it went that far uh you know i was just i haven't played vr since the arcades where they had the stupid circular thing and well didn't you have the virtual boy that's not vr (laughs) why would you say that just want to get it on record that you owned. I wasn't the only one that owned the Virtual, Virtual Boy, though. You and nine others yeah, the, the, owned it. I watched VR Troopers yeah. when I was a kid, so does that count? That counts. Rich that had, counts. A, had a Virtual Boy, didn't you? No, I worked at... Uh, oh, the that's right, College, that's right. So we, yeah. we had a Virtual Boy like five years after it was had been uh, released and nobody you know bought what, because they caused headaches. I didn't get the Virtual Boy when it first released. I got it... Like years after, and didn't know anything. Yeah, about we had it. a discount. It was like eighteen dollars, and still nobody yeah. would buy it because yeah. they saw the stand. We had to, we had to like uh, hook it up to the shelf because people would try it and they would walk away. But because of how it like kind of suctions to your face, it would tip over, and we were worried it would not that it would break, that it would fall on somebody. We get a lawsuit, so we actually had to secure it to the shelf. Excellent strategy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I bought it when it was like maybe fifteen bucks, eighteen bucks yeah. around there. I, I bought it on like super sell, and then I resold it for like sixty bucks. So, oh, profit! So I profit off of it. I don't know if it's more money now, but I, it was a junk. It was junk to me. So Farpoint, which is the next major PSVR release on May 16th, we have an aim gun that will come with it. It was announced at E3 last year. Mm-hmm. Looks promising. It looks exciting. It's a first-person shoot adventure. You know, a hostile alien planet. Again, we'll see if anyone gets sick. I thought I was going to get sick during Resident Evil 7, and that was an incredible experience in the VR. That's when I realize like vr is for and i loved it again i got at launch um until dawn rush of blood you're on a roller coaster shooting that was incredible i didn't originally buy it with the the launch i got batman arkham vr and at, at the demo disc and then on the demo disc i played until dawn after that i'm like i'm sold so i want it to be successful and i wanted to have a future in in gaming so i'm glad it reached its goal it didn't flop um, again, if it flopped, then you know it'd be done in a year. So I'm glad it has been successful. I hope it continues to gain momentum and have a new version again with the PS5. You know, have a PSVR 2.0 um, because Microsoft this week at GDC just announced their mixed reality headset will be come to the Xbox family, Xbox One, Scorpio for their reality headset come in 2018 so they're going to join in on the vr we'll see if nintendo with their switch if they join in on the vr you can just put that on your head have a little cam it'll work perfectly <laughs> it'll work perfect so if you don't hit the button right then you'll fall off a cliff oh, yeah. exactly reality. fall off the cliff with zelda god damn it you're gonna have sinking <laughs> issues with the heads <laughs> so do you think vr as a future, is it just a fad? Is it going to be like the, the rock band guitar hero be be good for a few years and then fall I, off I, a cliff? I did that for you, Rich. I think He loved his rock, rock band. band yeah. He loved we used it. to have parties at my house yeah. all the time, almost every week. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think it's catching wind. I mean, I think it's like word of mouth too, like people who do have it. and I, I didn't expect much from it. And then when I heard from you and you were like, you, you got to come over and try I this. was hyping it up. And we, it uh, delivered. We came yeah. over, we did like a little like a little uh, gathering, a little party, you know. Um, it was <laughs> drinking doesn't help. <laughs> It was no, not get drunk yeah. and totally play yeah. PSVR. It was, it was in, uh, oh no! If you're not wearing the headset, it's yeah. it's aces. It's, it's That's great because the then you start looking at it. the people. You're like, well, let's yeah, make so fun of this fucker. When I watch yeah. you falling all over yourself, <laughs> yeah. it's awesome. Um, and I didn't expect to to um, for it to be so in depth and so uh, uh, just involve you into the whole, you know, whatever game you're playing. It's it's really it's really. Um, it amazed me. That's all I can say. It amazed me. And then I was like, damn, this thing is really good. Who knows where they're going to go with this. Um, but judging by the cells, you know, especially with Resident Evil 7, after watching some of the gameplay on that, yeah, it was pretty intense. I was like, damn. I shit myself a few times. I would have shit myself a few times out of that yeah. fucking game. But um, 
I think there's a future for it. Um, I think they're just trying to figure out like where that future is and wh- where where to put the games at and what games to actually uh, pinpoint towards at the, at this point. Um, it, far, it's a far point. Far but, point. Yeah, that that game looks uh, amazing. I'm not sure if that's what it's gonna play until it comes on E3 again. Or it's a before E3, May sixteenth. May sixteenth. Huh? Will you be getting it? I will be getting it. Yes, right. uh, when I get back from my honeymoon, I'll, I'll be picking up far points. I will be over. I'll need to be in my virtual reality once I'm married. Rich is gonna try it. I'll try it. Yeah, yeah it, it looks. No, funny. I was I was the biggest skeptic that met that Batman VR. Like you were talking, I got nauseous because the when I was first there, you start the game, you're in Wayne Manor, and I didn't want to walk because you know you're in physical space. You don't want to fall over things or run into walls or look like a dumbass and you're very conscious of that but by the time we got to the second or third act and I'm in the coroner's office I'm doing stuff where I'm like let's see if there's like anything on the side of this door or yeah let's look if there's anything underneath this table and doing that that's where I started getting the nausea and we played a little bit more and I was like no I'm going to tap out now but that's well you're in the cage you didn't want to turn yeah. around. Because I, yeah, they I didn't want to turn the around. Croc was coming. I was ready to puke. It was right in my face. I was like, I'm going to jump and then I'm going to crap my pants and then I'm going to throw up all over your dogs. So I decided to stop before we got there because I knew where we were going. You're going to shit and puke all over my floor. No, it's just a callback for you. I can oh. actually control my, my bowels. But not with Resident Evil. I could not control it. But that was my concern when uh, PSVR launched. It was, you know, in small doses. Like, Until Dawn was small, London Heist, Batman Arkham. Again, that was about an hour and a half to beat it. To make a full-scale game. That's why Resident Evil 7 proved you can have a full-scale AAA game in VR. And again, because I wasn't as nauseous for Resident Evil. You can change the settings. It was just how real you feel. And I had to take it off and take a little break. Not just from the, the nauseous, just being scared out of my fucking mind. It, it, it does a good job of putting you in that atmosphere. It's just it, it, Resident Evil Seven just did that so perfectly, and I think that that reboot was just so successful with it too, that it helped people who did have the VR. They're like, of course they're going to jump on. They're like, well, of course not. Let me get scared out of my fucking asshole. <laughs> but it was good. It was a good game. I just hope after E th- or during E three, they announce more support. Yeah, because that was one thing that a launch. And then now it's starting to trickle. They had Star Trek uh, will be coming out. What was that? Star Trek. Yeah, there's a... Was an A or an E? Star, Star Trek. Star, Star Trek. Trek. You run for miles. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're, you're, actual, you're on... Actual trekker, Trekkie, you're on uh, Super Mario. Star Trek. And Rainbow Road, and you just fucking jog. <laughs> <laughs> you just fucking run. <laughs> 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 it's like the Jedi, you know? The yeah. Jedi from Star Wars? The Jedi. I just wanted to make sure that we were pronouncing I'm playing Zelda. Fuck you both. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're heading, right? No. Well, can you hand me the controller? No. Live long and go fuck yourself. Come yeah. on, finish the segment. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you both. I'm going to Zelda it up. <laughs> Star Trek. Thank you. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> the first way, I'm just saying. I was like, this is a new game I haven't heard of. <laughs> so I just hope on E3 they announce more support, more titles that will then support the VR so it's not just the first year dies out. But again, it's it's making the sales. I wish it all the success. I want it to succeed. Okay. Microsoft, again, we'll see. I thought it was going to be Oculus. Was actually. I thought they were going to jump on board. They'll make the announcement at E3 for Scorpio, but they're making their own headset so we'll see xbox and sony go together in the virtual reality in 2018 but very excited for vr for the future the potential again put me in that setting a paranormal activity lost soul will be coming out soon yeah again so i can shit myself some more times (laughs) so we'll see my living room just gonna be covered of shit won't be here for the cleanup that's why i have dogs (laughs) I clean up after their shit. <laughs> it's payback's a bitch. Literally. Literally. <laughs> I love callbacks. That's why continuity is important, people. That's why. See that? See the fun you can have with it? <laughs> it's 
Again, we we all loved VR. I I brought up the hype train. I brought them over. They had to test it out. Again, we'll play some more VR. Glad it's going to hit a million within six months. I wish the VR nothing but the good luck and the best because I'd still want to play VR for the future, for the years to come. So please let us know what you take on your take on PSVR, how your experience has been. Do you think it's a gimmick? Do you think it's going to last? And what games should be VR compatible that are already regular experiences? Yeah, Absolutely. It is that time of the Games Cast for our question of the week. So we just talked about the Nintendo Switch, the launch that just happened on Friday. So my question to you is, what is the best game console launch ever? In gaming history... What do you think is the best console launch ever? So there can be different tactics that you can tackle this question. Is it just based on one quality game-changing experience, such as Super Mario 64, Halo, and I will throw in Breath of the Wild, that one big game that stands out? Or is it the quality of the range of games over genres? Because there's been console launches that's been around 20 games 25 games so what is what do you think is the best game console launch ever and why you know uh for me playing all these different systems i think for me was uh playstation 2 um i remember the one of the first titles was ssx i don't know if anybody remembers that but that's a, a snowboarding game and when I first played it, at then I was like, "Well, this is somewhere where I can see other games like use that implementation." Um, not necessarily the snowboarding thing, but where the graphics were going at that time, mm-hmm. and also the gameplay. The game was was a great game, it was an amazing game for a first title launch, and that was the first game that I had. So um, I I don't I can't, I can't vaguely I try to remember what other games my friends had at that time that they picked up. But I remember they were asking me to borrow my game to <laughs> skip over theirs. And it was SSX, which was uh, by EA. Yeah. And when I'm talking launch, I'm talking day one. Yeah. Not the launch window Mm-mm. that everyone's saying, the first 90 days. Mm-hmm. Talking about day one when a console is launched, yeah. the best launch lineup on day one. So PlayStation 2 would it be... It was for me, because then I was sold. I was like, okay, well, I know what direction they're going with the games. Uh, once I played SSX, I mean that was just so the best game console away. launch. So the one game SSX that, that was enough. That yeah, because then I saw what they could do with, with the upcoming titles that they were gonna, what they were gonna bring out. You know, it it just uh, that ge- and I I hate sports. Like I don't play sports games at all, and that was kind of a, a mix of a sports game and also it was mostly sports and action because yeah. you, you could punch the other players couldn't you and like knock them off the a little bit yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like Road Rash on like <laughs> like Road Rash it was yeah. a little bit more competitive Tony Hawk yeah yeah and it was on snowboards and it was great like that was my first game you could somewhat customize things yeah by different boards yeah and, and your, your uh, the snowboard that you chose had different tricks as well yeah there was leaderboards and stuff like yeah. that yeah so I mean it, it just that's the one that got me I like that what are you going to go with, Steve? I've been waiting for this, and I know I'm going to get shit for it. <laughs> I have reasons. The best game console launch ever. The Nintendo Wii. The best game console launch. Why is I actually that? took a drink so I could do a spit take, but no, <laughs> I, I, I actually uh, had a similar thought. The Nintendo Wii. Why? You can see how that can be... Sports. Controversial. Launching with The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Again, that's for the hardcore gamer for the Wii. It's a GameCube title. So is Breath of the Wild the Wii U title? Technically, yeah. But it launched on the system, so I got a Wii yeah. on day one. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just bringing up controversy. But it was available on the Wii for the hardcore gamer. Yeah. Wii Sports. That is a game changer. In itself. No matter what you think of the Wii, Wii Sports is a game changer. Yes, I agree completely. How it showed what you can do with motion controls. Again, I'm talking day one, not the end of the Wii life cycle, which it was just shovelware. Yep. 
Yeah. But Wii Sports, a pack-in with a game, which one two switch, like Rich, I don't I don't even know if it was even on camera, said that one two switch should have been, I'm giving you credit, should yeah. have been packed in it's with a tech demo, the but console. It shows you potential and gets you hyped up. You shouldn't pay sixty dollars for that. They should pay themselves to make sure that that's included so that you yeah. tell all your friends or you bring us over to make sure that you have the ability to have them milk cows to convince them to go out and spend $300 of this. I like how we just like to throw in the milk cows thing over and over again. Because Nobody it's the, the most ridiculous and the most demeaning thing that they could have come up with. And it's the most Dude. antiquated. It's a way of them going, you're jerking something off, but it's not because it's got a real world uh, version of that. So, so you're not jerking you're, a big dick, no, but it, that's what it is. It's you're jerking no, a dick. It takes skill. How good are you are jerking dick? That's what drunks like us at a, at a get together are going to do is be like. I should win every time then. Exactly. You know that's what? why you I lost. The emotion <laughs> I lost. The, the sports resort. I actually lost. No, it actually takes finesse. Well, no you did cows. against your fiance, <laughs> which finesse. is actually a compliment for her. <laughs> but just so we're all clear, when we played the Wii Motion Plus, the sports resort beat me completely, and I mean in the game, not in real life. I just did jerk off motions for Wii <laughs> exactly. Motion. Exactly. I was actually trying to, to, to sword fight, and he was actually trying to sword fight. Guess who won? This guy. And you know, I will tell you all day and night. <laughs> Completely won. He completely won. I'm trying to avoid euphemisms because I know he's going to edit it into me saying. It's I'm just saying thank you for the compliment to the, the you fiance. Won. You were very competitive that day. No. And you know what? I can. It is. It is it's a compliment to Sarah. That no, that she beat she me in won. milking cows. Yep. And she dominated. She had the finesse and squeezing. You know what? She got if, if more squeezed out. If you were to call out. me and be like, we're playing the 1-2 switch. We're going to milk some cows. I'm going to be like, go fuck yourself. What else you is literally there? texted him that. <laughs> Again, I'm literally. the fourth wall breaker. I'm Deadpool here. That happened. He did text that, and he said, "The fuck we are." <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. it's not happening. I mean, I'll play something else. I'll try whatever else there is. But, but you know. So those are the two big titles: Legend of Zelda: Twilight Princess and Wii Sports. But there was other launch games that came to show the motion controls. First one. Super Monkey Ball. I loved Super Monkey Ball on the GameCube and how they did it with the motion controls yeah. showed it as a launch title, Super Monkey Ball. Also, Trauma Center. Have you guys yeah. heard of... I have I heard of Trauma, Trauma Center. Center. Yeah. Trauma Center, and now with motion controls performing surgery, again, launch game. So those four launch games showing what you can do with the motion controls, take advantage of the Wii. They got great reviews. No, the, 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 those they four were games. Fun games, too. Yeah. Fun games to do, challenging. Yeah. Also, that launched for the Wii. Again, Red Steel. Yeah. It, they over promised of what Red no, Steel. No, but it was a big seller. It was, was going to be. It was a big seller. To sell what it can be done. Again, it wasn't fully realized until the Motion Plus, but by then it was too no, late. No, but everybody's convinced that sword fighting was accurate. It didn't matter. They, they yeah. got what they wanted out of it. So. Yeah. But again, it was... And the, didn't the sequel have the, the Robo Lincoln and Washington? So how do you not give that two thumbs up? <laughs> yeah, so Red Seal again, a launch title to see with the gun... With the, 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 the sword was okay, but you know, with the gun, exactly. with Red Steel. Also launched with Call of Duty 3. Again, didn't compare to the actual console games, again, on the Xbox 360. Or no, but they used the motion controls in different ways for the crouching and stuff. And motion and controls. Out. Again, launch game Call of Duty 3. Oh, it wasn't... Oh, I hate to admit it. I'm going to concede. I'll, I'll tell you mine in a minute, but yeah, I concede you win. And then Rayman, Raving Rabbids. Again, that was a fun party game. Get to know what the motion controls are on launch. Again, because the Wii had so much mystery around it to see what can these motion controls do. And that's what these launch titles... Again, there's a lot of shovelware as well, even on day one with the Wii. But a lot of it came later on. A lot they of it came, came to, later they on. They came to play the first day. I'll, I will. I hadn't thought of that. I, I was wrong on my earlier estimations. And again, they had... My earlier unaired estimations. But... <laughs> the one thing that I think tops it is the virtual console for the Wii. The n nostalgia. Again, that was in 2006 when the Wii was launched. Nost nostalgia as, you know, is all emulation, the Retron. 
So it wasn't the emulator that wasn't big yet to go retro. Virtual oh, console. Yeah, yeah. And these are the virtual console launch games on day one when the Wii launched. Had the original Legend of Zelda, Super Mario 64, Sonic the Hedgehog. Those three titles on day one for virtual console. So you get those new games as well to show what the motion controls are. are and you can go old school, get the Legend of Zelda, Super Mario 64. Also, you get SimCity F-Zero as well, which was, was Super Nintendo launch title. That was titles. the first time we got a Sega a Sonic game on a Nintendo console, wasn't it? Was yeah. it that emulator from the original Sonic? Yeah, yeah. so the first time that playing was a big Sonic sign of, on Because I was one of the NES. Genesis guys that does what Nintendo don't. I understand. That was a big move. And that again, it had thing. other had other launch titles for the virtual console, but those are the big three where, again, you can download those games on day one when you got your Wii. Yeah. So that's why I think the Nintendo Wii actually had the best launch lineup ever. Conceded. I was, I was actually going to say the Game Boy because of the packing with Tetris. And Tetris was a, I don't know if anybody's looked into the history of that, with how that was a big game changer. The Russian government has made a lot of money off of that. The creator basically died penniless in, in prison is one of the stories I don't I'm not gonna don't quote me on that but that's one of the things that I've read in the last couple of weeks um, so that and I remember that that was the go-to thing everybody had it because it came with the system and it was a it was a new way of playing convinced people that this was something that could could really be innovative but I I completely concede you made nothing but solid points in the Wii and like I said Earlier times, we've had these discussions about the, the value of the Wii. That was a very strong lineup. So, Yeah, the lineup, and then, but once, after a few years, it's a totally different story of what happened to the then, Wii, which led happen, to the Wii U. That can happen with anything. The, the last titles that were coming out on, on anything are either they use the hardware to its maximum, or they're just clinging on because they don't have the money to, to buy the new developer kit. So, yeah. So do you think one game... Can make a launch such as halo on the xbox that saved xbox if there was no halo we might not have an xbox one i okay earlier discussion we've had the the wii sports is the i i always talk about attachment of of other titles a lot of people bought the wii because they got wii sports that's the only that's thing only that they, they bought had. so bottom line not only system seller that's that whole generation for them mm -hmm. They didn't ever buy shovelware. They didn't buy any Zelda, Mario, any of that kind of any of those titles. It was only Wii Sports. So Tetris was a nice thing and was a cultural shift, but the numbers are behind it. The the impact it had and the the sales numbers of adoption rate. Because I think a lot of people bought Game Boys. It bought at least one more title. Some like sixty five percent of people only bought a Wii, and they never bought a secondary title. So they had the Wii Sports, and that was it. Because it was it was just Wii Sports and what it could provide for you. Because everybody for wanted everyone. to bowl. They wanted to bowl, and that's where you get all those videos of people throwing their Wii through their flat screen. And, <laughs> and was that not all over the news? That was. And every YouTube video is, oh, we just bought a 32-inch flat screen, and my grandfather threw the Wii Mote through it. Uh, that's that's all it was. But it was it was based on Wii Sports. So. <laughs> and the Nintendo 64 only launched with two games. Pilot Wing 64 and Super Mario 64. But again, Super Mario 64 changed the way 3D gaming yeah. is. But again, would we be able to do that this day, which Nintendo Switch almost did? They no, had the five retail game. games and Breath of the Wild. No, you remember they were doing pre-sales for Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Because yep. it was delayed. It was and delayed. Yeah. Which was a funny... I was working at Toys R Us at the time in college. And it was a funny thing because when Star Wars originally launched in 77, that Christmas they were, Kenner was, was selling basically IOUs for figures because they couldn't, they didn't make the figures yet. So it was, get this cardboard thing, you know, you'll pre-order four characters and you'll put this under the tree, which is you open it up and it's like a pop-up gift card that shows the four characters and is like, they will be here in March <laughs> and that's what people were giving their kids but it was Star Wars and it was such a cultural phenomenon and everything that it actually 
made Kenner into the powerhouse that it is today, that it's, you know, it's still a, a huge company bought out by Mattel, mm-hmm. but still. Um, but th- that's what we went through at Toys R Us is pre-orders everywhere. I remember trying to sell everything and saying we only had the two, but you can pre-order these other six titles. <laughs> two titles, that's all you need. You can pay for it right now and then just have them come with the, the receipt. They can pick it up and, and, you know, on their way home from, from school, they can pick it up. Salt Lake, it was different time yeah yeah it was 96 when this 64 launched again super mario 64 was incredible um i this might be controversial but i don't have it in the top three greatest mario games of all time that might be a different time that we'll discuss that yeah that's a follow-up question yes (laughs) um but my second one is probably the super nintendo they had five launch games they had f-zero Gradius 3, Pilot Wings, Sim City, and Super Mario World. Again, I loved Gradius 3, F Zero, again, that racer. Super Mario World. It's one of the greatest Mario Sim games City of all time. Ass, though. Yeah, it didn't listen for me. That was that was your little add ons to the Joy Con. Where's the instruction <laughs> manual? This don't make no t- sense to me. Nope. Uh-huh. How are you? Just nothing but menus. Yeah. yeah. Like click on icons. <laughs> so there's our our greatest launch consoles of all time. Mo was PlayStation 2, Rich was the Game Boy, mine was the Nintendo Wii. Please let us know in the comments below what your opinion is and what you feel is the greatest game console launch ever. We are at the end of our games cast. And you can tell we're at the end because Rich and Mo, their drinks are empty. So they need to <laughs> load up. So we end our games cast by going balls deep. This is where we tell you what games we're going to be playing all week long. Starting with Mo, what we be going balls deep in? Uh, still Zelda, and I'm actually picking up Horizon finally. I'm a little late to the game, but I am picking up Horizon. Uh, it's just a must. Uh, How are you going to balance that time between Horizon and I Zelda? I will do Two it. Two open world one games over people. 40 hours each. They will fuck each other. That's <laughs> Horizon wow. and Zelda. Yeah, Horizon and, and then Zelda. Mass Effect. Yeah. In two weeks. He's yeah. not going to play Mass Effect. Let's be honest. You're going to be behind in that. No, I'm going to... You'll gonna... pick it up on day one, but you're not going to play it until at least week three. Well, it's we'll see. We'll day. see what happens. And multiplayer's for Siege, too. Still playing Siege. And for all. It's a lot of games. What is she chewing? I do what I'd have to do. And Rich, what will you be going balls deep in this week? Um, you were nice enough to lend me Shadow of Mordor, so I'm going to try and finish that game. I didn't realize how in-depth it was before Andromeda comes out. But uh, yeah, You got this. I believe so in you. I'm, I'm about an hour in. We'll see. I'm, I'm 100% on collection stuff, so it does not bode well. I'm just going to try to power through the story and collect stuff otherwise. We'll see how that goes. And you are a completionist. Many times, not not all the time. I try to. If if there's a perk involved, or it's gonna make it easier to beat that final boss, or the boss is heading towards the end, then yeah, I'll I'll collect that stuff. If I get a special shotgun that gives me times four power kind of thing, I'm gonna go and do the steps to collect that. But otherwise, no, I don't need to find all the the tags in San Andreas and all that stuff. But if I get perks like in Vice City, where you have the, your your different Add-ons, yeah, I find all the. Uh, I never played Vice City. The extras. Don't say that; it's the best ever. Uh, I started with GTA Four. Vice City was the best. I was late to the game. game. I was late to the game. What? Yeah, and I will be playing Legend of Zelda all week, all weekend. I have until the twenty-first to complete it. I don't think I'm going to achieve that goal before Mass Effect comes out because I only play one game at a time. Mo, I've. I don't know how you do it. Have all juggling all these games. I have to play one game at a time. <laughs> beat the game. I know you. That's all you do. This is where you just drop juggling all the, the balls. The Salt Bay meme, and he's just dropping games. Yeah. <laughs> Zelda and one two switch. Yeah, I'm one of those people. I, ha- I have that problem. Like I switch from game to game, and then I'm like, what the fuck are the controls? Can't you commit? <laughs> like, can't you commit? Just pick mm-mm. one. No. Put a ring on it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the look? <laughs> uh, you might want to edit that one. That was, that was a serious look. Fuck. Uh, well, those are the games we'll, we will be playing this week. Please let us know in the comments below what you will be going balls deep in. 